Hello YouTube, Michael here with the Gates Corporation and welcome to our second Design IQ tutorial video. In this video we're actually going to be walking through the Drive Detail Report section of Design IQ. We're going to actually be going through the exact same example we covered in our first video. So if you have any questions around the design of the drive itself, the parameters, or just the overall layout, please refer to that first video for additional information. So this is the screen we actually left off at. So we had just clicked Calculate up here in the upper right hand corner which calculated all of our tensioning values as well as our width, our belt width defined by our service factor right here. And so what that does is it actually unlocks this print button in the upper left hand corner right here. Now if you don't see this print button, likely it's because you haven't clicked this calculate button, so be sure to do so beforehand. And so this prompt is how you cater the report to show only the information you really want to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight a couple of things that I would recommend selecting and deselecting just so you can have a relatively short and concise report but that also has enough details to answer any questions that might come up. So for example, this first box up here is the print geometry only or print geometry and dynamics. Always recommend print geometry and dynamics. It's, it's full of a ton of great information. Next is the units. You can change the units much like we did in the first video. You click that button and then hit this drop down right here. You can switch to metric. For now, I want to keep it in English, so I'm going to click OK. Next is the dynamic output. In this case, I always recommend going for the detailed. Um, it just contains a little bit more information in the summary. The, sum the summary is pretty high level. And then we're going to unclick this hide minimum width. We want to show it, so we're going to unclick it. Over here, we have the pivoting min max position. This has to do with your idler. Right now it's in coordinates. We're going to leave it there just because it's a slotted idler. If you had a pivoting idler, it might be more useful to show angles versus coordinates, but in my case we're going to leave it there. Next is the tensioning information. Now this first box here says tensioning data for all for selected span, and this next one is tensioning data for all spans. Now, for example, if you have a drive that has numerous spans, 10, 20, 30 spans in it, you can imagine Showing the tensioning data for all spans will make this report very, very cumbersome and very, very dense. However, in reality, you're probably only checking the tension in, at one particular span. So if you know that span, select it. It's actually this green one right here. If you don't, and, you're, and your drive only has a few spans like ours, I'm actually going to just include all the tensioning data for all spans. Um, just to show you what it looks like, next is the tensioning data for, selected, for the selected tensioning method. Right now our, our tensioning method is actually up here, it's the force deflection method. If you have a method you like, um, definitely select it up here. We offer three kinds. We have the force deflection, the sonic tension meter, as well as the tensioner force slash torque. For this example, I'm going to show uh, the tensioning data for all tensioning methods. Again, if you know what you're comfortable with, definitely select it up there before you hit calculate and uh, therefore you don't have to click this tensioning data for all tensioning methods. Last step is to click the print button. And it should generate this report. I'm actually going to export it here just to make it a little bit easier to view. So this is the drive detail report. We have our belt data here. We have our selected belt, the polychain GT carbon, the 8MGT. We have the pitch length in inches as well as number of teeth the belt width it's recommending, and the calculated belt width, which agree in this case. We have our overall drive layout, which we did in our first video. You can see all of our parameters as well. You can see our XY table, the number of grooves, um, the ratio, wrap angle, so on and so forth, as well as our slot min and max. That is for our idler. We have some more detailed idler information here. Uh, just gives you an idea whether or not you're going to have enough space in order to install and tension the belt. So keep scrolling down. Next we have the dynamic data. So this is one of the most useful portions of this report. So you can see all of our pulleys right here. Um, we have all their RPM, the rim speed, the direction of rotation, the loading information, uh, SF stands for service factor, the span tension, this TR st uh, stands for tension ratio, and as well as shaft load and angle. So this information is great, especially if you have to protect the integrity of some of the equipment, like bearings, shafts, things like that. This FR denotes a fatigue rate. So this, this percentage just kind of gives you an idea of which sprocket's actually gonna wear faster. 
most of the time it's going to be the smaller sprocket because it's seeing more cycles, which makes sense here given this, these percentage values. So just something to keep in mind. Next we have the tensioning information. So remember when we click tensioning data for each span. So notice how there's three different ones here. We have span one, span two, and span three, and they're all force deflection. That's because it's showing us the force deflection method for each span. Now notice the deflection distance is different depending on which span you're measuring, as well as the force slightly changes as well. So keep that in mind. Just be thorough when it comes to choosing which span you're going to be measuring tension from and make sure you choose the correct table to pull from. Same goes for the sonic tension meter here on the next page. Same thing, one, two, three for each span, span three, span two, and span one. And the hertz value changes in each case. So again, just be careful of which span you're measuring from and choose a correct table. The last method is the tensioner force slash torque. Now, so this is essentially a value you would push down on the tensioner width in order to get the correct tension in the drive. So let me scroll down a little bit more here. It's spl split up on two pages. But you can see that these, these values actually stay the same for each case. It spits it out three times for the three different spans. But because we only have one idler in the drive itself, the values are all the same. The last section is the belt notes slash warnings. Now if you had any warnings, such as high rim speeds or not enough belt wrap, those would be listed here. Now this particular drive does not have any warnings whatsoever, so I will do a drive in the future that will list out a number of warnings here so you can see what they look like. But if, if your particular drive does come up with notes or warnings, please do not take them lightly. They can be detrimental to a belt drive. But more or less, that is pretty much it when it comes to the drive detail report section of Design IQ. So if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us. We can be reached by email at ptpasupport at gates.com or by phone at 303-744-5800. Thank you for watching.